Hello everyone, I'm Mark Thompson with the Digital Music News, this on the ground report brought to you by Open on Sunday, your trusted partner for catalog financing. I am so excited to be here in Brooklyn, New York for Mondo 2023. It's a music conference that brings together both artists and executives for a fantastic exchange of ideas when it comes to the latest issues facing the music industry. Take a listen. Cool and trendy, the vibe here at Mondo 2023 generated from the neighborhood, Williamsburg in Brooklyn, New York. With tech reminders on every corner, it was fitting that AI was one of the first topics of discussion in the water tower venue. When the voices sound too perfect, we don't know who they are. We remember Otis Redding, Billie Holiday, Ozzy Osbourne, Johnny Cash, Right, Neil Young, whether you like their voices or not, the fact is the memorable voices of the world we know because of their imperfections, not their perfections. With the conversation continuing in the pavilion below. Hey, I'm Anthony. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tuni, uh, Tuni.io, generative music company. One of the few ethical music companies that's working with a lot of big companies right now, a lot of big brands, record labels. So one of the Timely topics uh, at the conference is around um, copyright tracking and attribution when AI is involved. And um, some people know that uh, deep learning can obscure copyright and sourcing, uh, which makes it hard to keep track of royalties and, and you know provide proper attribution to artists and rights holders who input into a deep learning system. Uh, 2D's answer to that is sampling and doing a loop and sample based uh, generative music algorithm which receives copyright protection, does not obscure ownership, and has full trackability. In the future, there might be systems and legislation that come into place that make tracking and one-on-one, one-to-one uh, attribution uh, possible for deep learning models, but it's not uh, possible in 2023. So I think sampling and a loop-based generative approach is uh, the way to go for now. And the kickoff party was a blast. The bar filling up quickly with attendees making new friends and reconnecting. I'm loving everything so far. I'm currently like building my arts management company and just making sure I'm in spaces that keep me near the people I want to be around and the community that I love. Um, yeah, so I'm here for a good time and experiencing all the connections. And um, yeah, building my artist management company. I manage two artists, Simbasid and Matt Betts, and we're taking the industry by storm. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew Maxwell. I'm an artist and founder of Family First Music Group. We're an independent label that's gonna make the intergenerational music that everybody wants and needs. Um, I'm here at the conference, enjoying reconnecting with old colleagues, getting to know new faces, um, and just growing our base and our community and our team for our artists and the community that we serve. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Tennille Doyle. I'm from the agency Ethos and Power. I do a special type of artist management, which focuses on the actual artist's life um, outside of their careers. Their careers included, of course, but their real life, you know, their day-to-day -day life, the things that matter the most to them. Outside of that, we do high-level event management and production for a number of clients. Um, we create experiential events. Um, and really present them and their brands to the world and find really cool, great activations, especially music related for them. Um, so of course you can always check us out, ethosandpower.com, and we look forward to working with you. The New York nightlife alive. Catch some sleep if you can, as the Mondo schedule was packed full of panels and events. Josh Hurwitz from A2IM, American Association of Independent Music. Yeah, I'd like to give a little bit of long-term perspective about what's happened with music revenues in the United States over the last couple of decades. For a very, very long time, 1999 was the market high. Revenues were uh, about uh, almost $15 million. And then of course, Napster and a bunch of file sharing and all kinds of things happened during a digital transformation that really upended the industry in the, in the early 2000s. And you can see that revenues went down until about 2014. Um, and then from 2014, as I said before, we've had you know, eight full years of recovery. You can see that there's really a big jump after uh, from 2020 to 2021. That was after COVID and then another, a strong recovery for music after the world kind of came back to something that more resembles what it was before. And then in 2022, we actually reached a new all-time high uh, at, at nearly $16 billion. So really an incredible roller coaster of change in a relatively short period of time. Meanwhile, the networking continued even off-site at chill spots like Kafar Brooklyn across the street. 
My name is Lynn Gonzalez. I am an entertainment attorney. I have just joined Granderson Des Rochers as a partner in their music group. Um, so my panel, uh, I think the main point was, I think one of my biggest concerns with kind of disposing of assets and catalog sales is making sure that uh, everyone's thought through the options and is making the sale or the transaction for the right reason and that they have planned appropriately on how to, how to deal with the money or revenue that may be coming in. Thoughtful, informative, tech-connected, and cool, Mondo Week was certainly one to remember. And that's a wrap for Mondo 2023 here in Brooklyn, New York. I'm Mark Thompson for Digital Music News. I'll see you next time.